Welcome back to Mega Man Zero. Off screen, I've leveled up our Buster and Saber, so now we can do fully charged attacks. We also have Zero's old 3 slash combo, and we can shoot 4 Buster shots instead of 3. It's not really vital that you do that before this first mission, but at the same time, there's really no reason not to. You can just go straight into the first mission, and it's more exciting that way, I guess. But I just don't like starting without the fully charged attacks. I just like as much control as I can possibly have, and it's sort of annoying to not have those. Plus the charge attacks help you kill these stupid spiky cylinder thingies. And I'm sort of bad at avoiding them, so I like having my charge attacks to get rid of them. And it got dramatically rainy all of a sudden. And windy. Those little traffic cone type things make it windy. And if you break that cage and let that cyber elf float down, you can get it. But I'm not going to wait for it. It takes like a minute to float down. There's really no point getting the caged cyber elves while you're in the level, because you can't use them yet. You still have to go back if you do leave them, but not really a big deal. Now, and these things are basically here to let you train your weapons. So you can just sit here until the cows come home and keep hitting it with your weapons. And the game seems to expect you to do that, because you need to kill a fairly high number of them in order to get your enemy score up. Because this level requires a pretty high number of enemies killed to get full points, which I shouldn't have any problem getting. Oh, is that a boss door? That looks suspiciously like a boss door. Oh, boss airlock and dramatic music change. I wonder if- oh! Yep, it's a boss. He's Aztec Falcon. He really doesn't look like a falcon. Now those are spikes. If you've played a Mega Man game before, you know what spikes mean. They mean instant painful death. That's no good. This guy oddly has half the health of most bosses. Most bosses have a second health bar that's green. This guy just has yellow. And they kill him. He's really quite easy. If you didn't notice, there was actually a timer on that fight. It's like 1 minute 30, but it's actually pretty hard to not kill him in time. I actually don't know what happens when the time runs out. I assume the spikes drop and these guys all die, and it's probably a game over or something. Actually, I shouldn't say that. This game is sort of weird about letting you fail missions, and you can just continue on with the game. You can actually skip a large amount of the game. But, we got the Thunder Chip. The Thunder Chip is one of the three main elements in this game. Basically, you can use the Thunder Chip on some bosses that are weak against Thunder. And Thunder beats Fire, which beats Ice, which beats Thunder. It's basically rock, paper, scissors. Doesn't make too much logical sense, but it's easy to remember. Oh, Sir Bo is a nice guy that has some crappy weapons later in the game. Oh, and we got the escape unit, which is a really stupid game mechanic. If you remember what I said about failing just about any mission, you can use the escape pod to just leave any mission at any point in time, and the game just sort of slaps you on the wrist and says, oh, you got a bunch of us killed or something, and just lets you skip the boss and the level. It just lets you continue with the game. You lose some items, I guess, if you do that, but it's just... It, there's really no penalty for skipping the majority of the game, which I find really stupid. And spooky music, by the way. Being all sneaky. Sneaky as we can be while 
exploding large fireball thingies. Oh, and with the Thunder Chip, you can stun most enemies. But you really shouldn't stun those spinning thunder thingies. Because they really need to be in motion for you to continue on, so... Just leave them alone, like I'm not doing. And I really should be doing, but whatever. Hey, spiders. One weird thing about the Mega Man games, it's also sort of interesting. There really aren't any animals or anything. They're just robot animals. I guess they're called mechanoloids. But the game story just sort of treats them like normal animals. They're just sort of naturally there, despite being robots. I just think it's sort of neat. And you need to get out of my way, buddy. Thank you. Oh, and did I get that other cyber elf? I totally forget if I picked it up or not. I think I must have. This level there is a cyber elf inside those tanks and inside the fireballs. Yep, there's a boss door. I can see the boss door seal. Boss airlock? I wonder if there's a bo- oh! Yep, there's a boss. And your name is hard to pronounce. Did you steal my information? You stole my information! You jerk! I'm definitely gonna kill you and take your memory. I'm gonna cut out your heart and post it on Wikipedia! You did not take information. from an informatics major. This guy is actually really easy to kill if you use the thunder chip. You have to know that he's weak against thunder though, which... In this game you really don't have any way of knowing which boss is weak to what, unless you just attack them. In the little, later games it's a little more apparent. You're already dead. That's surprising. I hope I stole the information that was in your body before I blew you up. Doesn't really seem like I did, but... Oh! Self-destruct system! Oh no! So that means the whole place is gonna explode! Oh, wait. I guess the ceiling is just sort of slowly falling down. Well, that's very scary and intimidating, too. This is basically the classic Explosion chasing you down a corridor, except the explosion is just a bunch of columns from the ceiling, which actually makes it much less dramatic. And at the same time, no more realistic. It's just sort of weird. Yep, you're in the way, door. Why are you closing? You are annoying. Safety! Hooray. The green water is pouring on me. Please stop talking, Seal, so green water will stop pouring on me. It's sort of weird that this game doesn't bring you back to the base at the end of each mission. You have to just manually walk there. Return to base. We're still a superhero. That's pretty sweet. You analyze that data really fast. Oh, the poor data. It's all damaged. Oh, we got a weapon. Yeah. The extra weapons you get aren't really very fun, at least in my opinion. I believe the first one we get is the recoil rod. Or no, the triple rod it is in this game. It's sort of dumb. Yep, triple rod. Accidentally skipped most of his dialogue there, but basically this attacks and most of need direction. But instead of being able to attack three times, at level one it only attacks once. So once again you have to level it up before you can really use it. I'll do that off screen and I'll show you the fully leveled up one at some point. You know, next video. But I won't be using it very much. You do need it to get a few items. That's about it. It's a story train. You know, just pretty much every Mega Man game has a train level. You usually have to blow up the train. Capcom must really hate trains or something. Oh, and before I forget, I should remove that thunder chip, because we won't be needing it in this level. Pretty sure this boss is non-elemental. Oh, 
Oh, hello, little motorcycle dudes. Oh, right, E-Crystals. Those green things that some enemies drop, those are called E-Crystals. And you use them to feed Cyber Elves. You have to feed them a certain amount of E-Crystals before you can use them. Of course, I don't plan to use them, so that doesn't really matter for me. But it also lets you enable Ultimate Mode if you feed all of the Cyber Elves to max and then use all of them, i.e. kill all of them, literally. And that actually takes a fairly ridiculous amount of time. I believe I had to play through the entire game four times in order to get enough E-Crystals when I played this game on the Game Boy Advance, and I apologize, but I probably will not be doing that for the Let's Play. If I do, it'll, of course, I'll be off screen, but I seriously doubt I'll do it. Because it's just a massive pain. And in fact, you have to spend like 10 or 15 minutes just sitting there and killing all of the Cyber Elves. It's really annoying. And this is the first time hearing about a Cyber Elf on the train. You said this was supposed to be like a supply train seal. I would appreciate it if you were consistent in your mission objectives. But it's a train, so we're going to obviously head to the engine, and we are going to fight a boss, either on the front car or whatever. And then the train will probably explode or something, and then we'll be done. Whoa. I believe there are also quite a few cyber elves you have to get from enemies on this level. So we'll try to make sure to get all of those. There's one. I think there are th two more. There's one from you guys. Yep. And one from you guys. And one from you guys. There we go. Boss door. And what the hell is that? This is the engine. This is how trains work. This is why do not take the train. You thought they were powered by steam? They're powered by gigantic monsters. This is why do not take Amtrak. They have trains full of gigantic monsters. I, I just I just don't like that. I'm sorry. By the way, if you stay on those little piston thingies, you get thrown into the spikes. So that sort of hurts. And it hurts. I mean, kills you instantly. Whoa! Yep. Let me attack you, buddy. Whoa! There we go! That wasn't so hard. Except for the part where he almost killed me, but... He didn't. And there's the Cyber Elf. Hooray! Of course it's successful because of me. I was the only one doing anything. You don't really do much of anything at all, do you, Seal? Still a superhero. Yay. I guess we did cut their supply route. You need to be consistent in your objectives, Seal. Oh yes, we get a special Cyber Elf, Totten. She helps in the damage zone. That means spikes. She makes it so that you take damage from spikes instead of dying instantly. Anyway, let's save our game. And tune in for next episode. Nearly forgot. I got the triple rod fully upgraded, so now I can actually attack three times, which is nice. It's a little stronger than the saber if you use all three attacks, but... In my opinion, it's still not as good. Another thing it can do is it has a charge attack now, which is mediocre. And it can also do this little bouncy thing that's sort of fun. And it's also helpful because it can attack... Well, not attack. It can help you get some items, which is really the only use of the triple rod, in my opinion. But, you know, if you want to try it, be my guest.